What up, what up? You listen to my man, Maddie Bush, in the ADIDAS mixtape. Keep the shell code, please turn it up. Boom! Yeah. 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 Gather around and listen. You might just see my vision. I remember a time when I didn't have... Hey everybody, this is Kevin at Kevin Fox Films reporting for Film Courage. David and Karen asked me to come out to the It's a Film Festival. We're in historic Sonora, California. Um, it's a three-day festival. A lot of great movies here, all shorts and animations. I'm with Brett Steinle. He's brought his own movie, but you may recognize this guy as Mr. President. Um, we're in the middle of election time, and this guy's got more experience being president than um, most of the candidates that are running. So, Brett, everybody knows you from Watchmen and Transformers Dark Side of the Moon playing John F. Kennedy. You have another film out now, um, Kill the Dictator. Is well, that right? Well, it's not out now. We're just in post-production. We okay. uh, just wrapped last week in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. Okay. And what this film is really about is from 1959 to 1961, the end of the Trujillo era and how, you know, the uh, rebels there, uh, through the help of the United States government, uh, mainly uh, me as JFK, giving them the word to uh, take him out. Okay. But I didn't tell you that. <laughs> Yeah, no spoilers? No spoilers. No. Okay. <laughs> now, you've got a long television career um, going all the, back, all the way back to soap. So, and if I'm wrong, but uh, Bold and Beautiful, Young and the Restless? Yes. Young um, and the Restless was my very first show. You did um, some Dynasty. You've done, yes. um, oh my gosh, what else? Uh, it's television series after television series. I, I loved your bio. It was fascinating. But one of the things that fascinated me, and we didn't talk about this pre-interview, you're a precision driver. Yes, I am. How did yes. you get into that? Is that a hobby, just fast cars and speed, or is... Well, I started racing go-karts when I was little. Really? And um, uh, I ended my go-kart career with a big crash uh, on a city street where they had hay bales set up. But we were driving through the city streets like here in Sonora. Uh, you know, you could do 120 miles an hour down this street in a go-kart. Uh, quite fun. But uh, there was a turn, and I didn't make the turn. Big crash, the cart broke in half, the motor blew up, everything. And so that ended the go-kart career. But uh, still like driving and doing all that. And uh, it really continued on with commercials where, let's see, in, in Europe I've probably done 140 commercials and maybe... Maybe about the same in the United States so far. Wow. Yeah, you're, uh, I've seen a lot of those commercials. You're, you're a big spokesman for... Yeah, one of my uh, good clients is Western Dental. Okay. And that just expanded to Texas and Florida now. And about two months ago, we just did eight more commercials in one day. Eight more 30-second spots in wow. one day. Wow. So. Excellent. Now, you're here at ITSA uh, promoting your own film. And yes. it's Kale the Kaleidoscope, Ray Bradbury's That's story. Right That's here. Here, right yeah. here. We got to see it screened last night. I actually saw it for the first time. Um, really awesome film. I'm not going to give away spoilers, but the, the special effects are uh, outstanding, super high quality uh, production value, and you were kind of the, the whole deal behind this thing, right? I mean, you star in it, but you're not just the star of it. Tell us all of your other credits in this film. Well, I was looking for a vehicle for myself. Uh, I always loved sci-fi. I remembered uh, Ray Bradbury's Kaleidoscope from when I was young. And we all read that in school and re read the Martian Chronicles as well. And so I just picked it up and I started reading uh, Illustrated Man again. Um, and the second short story is Kaleidoscope. And I went, wow, this is perfect. It's uh, a, a great, great little story, uh, great characters, and fabulous writing with Ray Bradbury. So. I wrote the uh, film ad adaptation of this, combined some characters, made uh, this script with, uh, uh, you know, just with the, with the main idea behind this story. And then I said, well, I have to, I have to produce it. Now, what do, you, what do you have to do there? Well, you have to get the rights to it, of course. Ray's a very famous writer. He's written 650 stories, lots of novels, and, and many other short stories he's very famous for. So I contacted his agent. Uh, they said, we need this much money with a lot of zeros. And I got him down a little bit. But uh, so I wrote him a check. Then I had the rights to do it. And then I found a team. I found uh, Eric Totsi, uh, the director. He works at uh, NASA JPL doing uh, Mars rover 
uh, editing and producing of segments there. So he's like perfect for this kind of project. And um, he done a lot, done a lot of th things before that uh, fit into the space category there. So started finding other people, the cinematographer and this and that, and uh, then did the casting. And we shot this film in two and a half days. Uh, uh, half a day was the prep and setup of lighting and came in in two days and uh, instantly you know, got it in the can. And that was the live action. That's what you see happening inside our spaceship here that we actually built. It's nine feet tall. Yeah. And that set design is, is phenomenal. I mean, um, watching it last night, I'm, you know, as a filmmaker, I'm trying to, you know, dissect things and pick things Thank apart. And, and it's really phenomenally done. And I can't believe the time span that you, you know, you actually constructed those sets in. Well, thank you. Yeah, Hunter, Hunter Brown was the art director. Um, he's done a lot of work in town, too. But he did a fantastic job in making this look good. And we went up uh, northeast of Palmdale to the... Uh, uh, aircraft and uh, rocket graveyard that's up there okay. and that's where we found all of the goodies to make it look like a spaceship inside and everything and then of course outside is all uh, visual effects done by um, uh, digital domain DreamWorks Disney uh, the Lightworks in Cologne Germany we found all these great people to uh, to work on it and really make it look very photorealistic which was my goal uh, and, and kind of a requirement uh, that I wanted this to just look amazing. And, yeah. and well, I think we, we, we made that happen. You definitely reached the goal. Thank I mean, you. it's visually, it's it's stunning. And I'm we so... We have a lot of wind here we're doing. Yeah, it's well. a little breezy yeah. today. But, you know, visually it's stunning. And, you know, a, a reason I wanted to do this interview with you is, you know, you've got a lot of experience and you come from Hollywood, but you're here in Sonora, California, promoting your own film. So, you know, you've kind of went to the big time and now you're kind of back to the indie experience you even showed up last night with these great little buttons which is a you know great little a film button, festival well, you know, gimmick and then, then of course you, you come up with your little postcard, <laughs> postcard. You your postcard and uh tells all about it and where it's playing and everything so you make postcards and buttons and you know little posters that uh, fold up and uh roll up and take them on the plane with you and you know going around all the festivals is a great way to meet people meet other filmmakers uh, if this is what you want to do, this is where you should be, you know, because um, all the people that love film and have something to do with it, you can all hook up with and you never know who you meet. Sure. So it's a great way for uh, those who are just starting or even continuing to make new relationships with people that uh, you'll have an opportunity to work with in the future sometime. Sure. Now, what is your goal for the distribution on this? Where, where do you see this going as a, as, a, as a short, you know? Well, in the, in the past, shorts really didn't have any distribution mm -hmm. channel. Um, since we premiered this in June at the New Media Film Festival in Los Angeles, and by the way, we won the grand prize for that whole nice. festival. There. Congratulations. Um, I've had eight uh, distribution companies uh, deals offered to me. Uh, I'm waiting through through probably April of 2013. We're, uh, we've submitted it to Sundance, uh, the Berlin Film Festival, a couple of big ones. So we're waiting on those. And if we get in there, that will change the dynamic of um, uh, hopefully the distribution uh, income stream will go up because of that, you know, that higher uh, uh, clout that those festivals would bring. So uh, the channels are out there. There's the Sci-Fi Channel, obviously, because this is Sci-Fi. Um, but there are more and more things every day. Um, they're taking distributors are taking short films, putting them together in a block, and then having that 90-minute segment where they're selling that on video on demand, on DVD, on television, and stuff like that. Excellent. So, okay. And you brought up shorts and not having uh, a distribution. This is always a big debate where it's a film festival. This is all shorts and animation. Right. What, and, and I'm asking for your opinion here, what do you think has attributed to the sort of resurgence of popularity of short films? Well, films have gotten longer over the years, right? From the 90 minute, they're now two hours, two and a half or whatever. First of all, distributors don't like that. They like short films shorter films, 90-minute uh, films, where you can show actually five screenings in a day and you sell more popcorn in between. That's what it's all about for the, uh, uh, the, the theater, theater. Uh, the theater exhibitor, right? Got to get the terms right. Uh, but short films offer a chance to um, 
for the public to see and view many, many great stories in a shorter amount of time. And in today's world, everybody has so many things to do, it's hard to do two hours to go to a movie, but you could go see a couple of great films in a half an hour sure. and then go off and do whatever else you need to do. So that's really helping the short film business, uh, plus the distribution channels and you know podcasts and, and all the internet streaming and the uh, webcasts and all of the different uh, more venues that are out there for films. Uh, you know, a short film can fit in anywhere. So sure. that's probably why it's uh, there's a resurgence. Do, do you think it, it might have uh, something to do with the sort of short attention span of the YouTube generation <laughs> that might be bringing that up? And then speaking of theater, so follow-up question, speaking of theaters, do you see um, the possibility of, you know, sort of the serial in a short manner, and like you said, in blocks, coming back as, as sort of feature playings together in theaters? Do you think that's a possibility for short filmmakers? You know, I really do. I think that is a good possibility uh, that short films could be put together in serial f form and uh, be exhibited in the theater. I really do. Uh, but you have the video on demand. Uh, that's a huge thing right now. Um, you know, there are new things every day that they're thinking of and, and everybody's coming out with. They're just trying to figure out how to capitalize on all the new ideas. So uh, it'll come. Uh, short films. If you can make one, you have an idea, just make it, get it out there, show everybody that you can by taking it to festivals or giving it away, putting it on a DVD, giving it to your friends, putting it on the internet, on YouTube. Uh, there's a guy called Justin Bieber that had success with YouTube there, right? Yeah, that's true. You yeah. could do that with a short film too. I think he's got a lot of followers on Twitter, but I'm I not sure. I think he does. I think he does. But get your film made, show it to people, and then guess what? Just repeat that. Do it again a hundred times and you'll be a successful filmmaker. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> That's that, all you have to do. That is great advice. Okay, we'll wrap it up here. Um, so Brent Steinle, um, give it back to you, uh, 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 Film Courage viewers. Follow Film Courage on Twitter, at Film Courage. Um, you can follow me, at Kevin Fox Films. And you got a Twitter or a website you want to well, shout out? Well, RB Kaleidoscope on Twitter and Ray Bradbury's Kaleidoscope.com. Check it out, uh, follow where we are. The festivals are listed there. If there's one in your area, come by and see us and, uh, and watch the film and tell me personally if you like it or not. I'd like to hear it. Excellent, check out uh, Brent's bio on uh, IMDB too. It's fascinating if you, right. if you read through that stuff. I had a great time thank researching this. So All right, thanks. All right, thank you. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bears the cross. All I do is work where everyone else thinks that they're a boss. All day I dream about success. Yes, Adidas. All day I dream about success. Adidas. All day I dream about success. Adidas. All day I dream about success. Yes. All day I dream about success. Adidas. All day I dream about success. Yes. Adidas. All day I dream about success.